Hello everyone and welcome to this Spring Boot series. In this journey, we will explore the ins and outs of Spring Boot, a powerful framework for building Java-based applications. To kick things off, let's address the fundamental question, why Spring? Spring has been a cornerstone in the Java development landscape for quite some time, and there are compelling reasons for its popularity. Spring makes Java programming quicker, easier, and safer. It ensures modularity and maintainability, ease of testing a robust ecosystem. Spring ecosystem has various frameworks, such as Spring Data, Spring Cloud, Security, and even more frameworks that we will try to cover in this series. The Spring framework architecture provides 20 modules that can be used based on an application requirement. We have the Spring Bean module that offers Bean Factory, which is an implementation of the factory pattern. And there is the Core module that provides all the primary components of the Spring framework. It includes inversion of control and dependency injection features. The Context module is built on the solid base provided by the Core and Beans modules, and it's a medium which helps you to access any object defined and configured. And the Spring Expression Languages module offers expression language for modifying and acquiring object graphs during the runtime. Data access and integration layer consists of the following modules. It has the JDBC module that consists of a JDBC abstraction layer. It helps with eliminating the need to perform JDBC-related coding. The Object Relational Mapping module in the Spring Framework provides integration with various ORM frameworks, such as Hibernate, JPA, or Java Persistence API, and Java Data Objects, allowing developers to easily work with relational databases in their Spring-based applications. The Object XML Mapping module provides support for mapping between Java objects and XML representations. It allows converting Java objects to XML documents and vice versa. The Java Messaging Service module offers features like producing and consuming messages, whereas the Transaction module offers declarative and programmatic management method for implementing unique interfaces and for all types of plain old Java object. There is the WebSocket module in Spring Web that offers WebSocket-based and two-way communication between the client and the server in web apps. The web servlet module stores MVC-based implementation for web applications. And web module uses servlet listeners and a web-oriented application context. And finally, the web partlet module, which is also called as Spring MVC partlet. It offers Spring-based partlets and copies all the functionalities of a web servlet module. And the AOP, or Aspect-Oriented Programming Language, allows developers to modularize cross-cutting concerns in their applications. And by the way, cross-cutting concerns are aspects of a program that affect multiple modules and are difficult to modularize using traditional object-oriented programming techniques. And the Aspects module provides support for AOP. The Instrumentation module offers class instrumentation and loader implementations. It's used for specific application servers. And Messaging module offers a flexible and powerful abstraction for working with messaging systems, such as message queues, published subscribe systems, and asynchronous messaging protocols. And finally, we have the Test module that provides support for testing of Spring components with TestNG or JUnit tools. Okay, that was a quick overview of the Spring modules. Now let's see how to set up a Spring project. We can use the Spring Boot Initializer to initialize a new Spring Boot project. And let's build an online bookstore in those tutorials. Okay, to do this, we go to the Spring Initializer website. And here we can set up all needed requirements for our project and later download it as a zip file. And here we will use Maven, since it's commonly used in Spring projects for managing dependencies and building projects. We will be using Java and this Spring stable version. Now we can define the project metadata. And let's keep the default group 
You can also select your preferred group here. And we can set the artifact here. Let's name it Online Bookstore. We keep the packaging as jar file and also the Java version 17. Now the dependencies. Let's pick up the following dependencies. First, we need Spring Web, which provides the foundation for building web applications, APIs, and microservices in the Spring framework. We need the Spring Data JPA to work with databases and interact with it in terms of create, read, update, delete operations. And we also need H2 database dependency, which is a lightweight in-memory SQL database engine written in Java. It allows us to quickly set up a database without the need for external dependencies or complex configurations. Okay, we need those for now, and later we can still add more dependencies if needed. Now we click Generate to download the project zip file. And now we unzip the downloaded file and import it into our IDE. And here we go, we have our project set up. We see the main source code in the source main and test source code will be in source test. We also have the resources directory for the main and the test code. These directories contain non-Java resources used by the application and test respectively. Common resources including configuration files, property files, XML files, static files, and so on. We also have configuration files such as application.properties. These files contain configuration settings for the Spring Boot application, including properties related to data sources, logging, security, and more. Okay, in the next video we will dig deeper in the key concepts of Spring Core, so stay tuned.